There's been a lot of discussion over the past few years about creating a role to prevent collisions at home plate between base runners and catchers, and that role has finally been put into effect for the 2014 season. So let's take a look at exactly what it says and what it means for the players. A runner attempting to score may not deviate from his direct pathway to the plate in order to initiate contact with the catcher or any other player who may be covering home plate instead of the catcher. Okay, so what does it mean for a player to deviate from his direct pathway and to initiate contact? What can the runner not do? The rule goes on to explain that what this means is that the runner cannot lower his shoulder or push through with his hands, elbows, or arms towards the catcher. What would happen in the event he does break this rule? Well, two things. First, the runner will be called out, and second, the ball is dead and all of the other runners will have to return to the last base that they touched prior to the collision. Technically, this rule does not require the runner to slide, as many similar rules and lower levels of play do. As long as you don't touch the catcher, you can still run around him or jump over him. But if you aren't Ichiro, the best way to avoid being called out under this rule is probably by sliding. And the rule gets technical about what a slide in this situation would require. If the runner is coming in feet first, the runner's buttocks or legs should hit the ground before he makes contact with the catcher. On the other hand, if the runner is sliding in head first, again his body should make contact with the ground before making contact with the catcher. The final part of the rule is directed at catchers, who, unless they are in possession of the ball, they cannot block the pathway of the runner as he is attempting to score. If the catcher does block the runner's path without the ball, the runner will be called safe. The rule goes on to say that if a catcher cannot field a throw without blocking the runner's path to the plate, he's basically allowed to block the runner's path to the plate. So this rule does not really change a whole lot for catchers. Just like when a runner is running from first to second base, if the second baseman is making a play on the ball, the fielder has the right to make the play, and the runner has the responsibility to get out of the way. In much the same way, the catcher here fielding a throw has the right to field the throw. So all in all, this rule is saying that the runner cannot initiate contact with the catcher. And while he's not required to slide under the rule, it's probably the best way to make sure that you aren't called out.